never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a pain is Never seen a cancer death Never seen on a poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change is here Place to be right here, right here with hey, you're right you now. know me. It's the bigger, 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 bigger team. What's going on, y'all? My name is Travis Johnson, also known as Bigger T in this realm. And I'm joined as always by my best friend, almost lifelong. We'll just call it lifelong. Why not? We were we were meant to be. Before yeah. the sixth grade, before eleven 100%, 100%. years old, our our stars have been aligned since before. There was nothing in the stars when since, Travis Johnson and Clint Clark came. That's together. right. And Clint Clark, how you doing, buddy? This I was going to tell you. I need you to dial it up in a notch. You, that was that was a little that was a little bit too much. Yeah. Oh, but, sorry, sorry. But it was good. You scared me. You scared me a little, but. Um, oh, good. I, I would find you in a thousand different lifetimes, Travis. Yes. I will find you in a thousand different lifetimes. That's the time. It doesn't matter what metaverse I'm floating around in. You 100%. Know. It is. I, it, it, there, how many verses are there? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of versa. You know, it's Loki will find them. The DC universe, the WWE universe, and I'm in all of them. I'm in That's a bunch right. of different universes. And I've found Travis Johnson in every thing in one of those. That's right. I've been the Marvel universe. I found Travis in the DC universe. That's right. I'm there. He's he's there, and Floating I found around. every every last one of them with my Infinity Stone or something. So, I don't yeah, hundred a hundred percent. Yeah, something. Yeah. Well, Clint, man, how's your week been? How's how's it going? It's we're into March now. Maybe March. You know, I'm I've like I figured I'm thinking I'm gonna rock the tank top tonight. I just Might as well, top. man. It's I put on some little Billy Joe. You know that is one of my. That is a low key, like good SNL skit. Jared's room with Jimmy Fallon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That like that. That, that is a, a good one. like people don't really talk about the all time classics and normal. Yeah. And as I sit here with this, I see how much more sun this gets than this. So I'm yeah, like, yeah. Shirtless. It happens. Yeah. Um. So where? So Jared's room, and he go. He's talking about you know. He goes. uh, He's got Katie Holmes in his room. It's one of my favorites where he's like, he goes, hey, man, I, I convinced my um, my roommate that chicks really dig mesh tank tops and Billy Joe. And so he comes in as Chris Parnell and he's wearing like a skin tight mesh tank top. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, oh, you must be an uptown girl. <laughs> and he's like, I love Billy Joe and mesh oh. tank tops. He must be an uptown. I can't remember. He's he had a dorky name for his. All right, real quick. Yeah, favorite Julie Joe song. Billy Joe song. Um, only the good die young. 
You well, may be right. Yeah. I may be crazy. But also I do I do also really enjoy um Allentown. There you go. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah I like it. They're they're my two, they're I mean, they're my two go to. Yeah. How about you? you may be right, I may be crazy. That's my favorite one. Yeah. Maybe just a lunatic you're looking for. Turn out the lights. Don't try to tame me. Yeah. So I was Maybe like, <laughs> we, we weren't playing on. I talking. rolled the bull, the psycho in the wind. It's got, man, it's some good lines in that song. You know, uh, you know, he originally did Shameless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like he, like he did it before Garth. And, well, see, uh, in that song that I just said, the first time I heard it, Garth did it. Yeah. But, you know, Garth, I don't know. I mean, not really a little known fact. Garth is a huge Billy Joel fan. Oh, huge Billy Joel fan. And that's why he covered those songs, because those are some of his favorites growing yeah. up. Well, I, th I remember, you know, you hear because the Garth channel used to be on Sirius XM, and I was so mad when it went away, because I probably listened to that oh. more than I listened to any other station. One of the things you don't ever think you'd pay for, it, but you pay for radio now. At least yeah. I did. Yeah. Because um, I just I can't live without it. Like, I have a 15-minute commute, and I have needs. Um, so you know what? It is what it is. Did I tell you about my uh <laughs> did I did I tell the story about last week trying to get songs stuck in my head on the way to school? Did I tell no. you that story? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my way to school to work, you know, and I'm you know, in my truck and I'm like, Man, I wanna I wanna get, you know, I was I wanted a praise and worship song stuck in my head. I want I want yeah. I said, you know, because I like to I like Let those it. days. I want a, yeah. a peppy song uh -huh. stuck in my head as I walk down the halls and all that stuff, you know, because, you know, how I mean, you know, schools kind of a can be a drag at times. And I'm, I I'm, had the BK Have It Your Way jingle stuck in my head the other day. Exactly. Like, all day, BK Have yeah. that's, that's the, That was just like on repeat. Yeah, and that's what you want. You want something like that. Like, I remember one time in college, I was studying for a Hebrew test. I'd stayed up all night, and I'm walking across campus. All night playing video games. Don't lie to me. <laughs> well, okay, maybe. <laughs> I'm walking across campus, walking across the bridge, and all of a sudden, into my head pops, I would walk 500 miles, and I would. I was, anyway. So I'm on my way to work, and I'm thinking, there's a couple songs. I'm thinking, man, I want to get these songs in my head. So there was a Kirk Franklin song, you know, it's kind of, you know, peppy gospel, like, you know, got a beat to it and stuff like that. I'm thinking, man, I want to get that one in my head. And then there was another one. Uh, I listened to both of them like two or three times on my way to work yeah. each. And I'm like, man, I want to be singing these as I go down the hall. So I get to work and I had to go to the office and I come back by and there's this little courtyard area where the junior high hang out before when the weather's nice they hang out outside in this little courtyard area before the bell rings and on certain days this one teacher has duty she'll bring like this speaker that's on rollers that she has it's a bluetooth big like a big bluetooth speaker and she'll play music for them so i turn the corner and playing on her speaker like i'm i'm sitting here singing uh uh, bless me by Kirk Franklin. Bless me, bless me, bless me, Lord indeed. You know, and I'm, that's going in my head, man. And I turn the corner, and all of a sudden, it, the earworm dives into my ear and takes over. And you know what it is, Clint? Unskinny bot by poison. Justin freaking Bieber, baby. Yeah, no, that's bad because you can't control what gets stuck in there. And it's there, man. That's one of those songs when you hear it, you don't want it to be there. Oh, I get it, dude. You're talking to a guy it's that there. was walking around for like a day and a half going, BK, <laughs> your way. You BK. have no control. It just happens. Uh, yeah. No, and you the rest of the day, me. you know what? I'm walking around school going, baby, baby, baby. Oh, and then I hit myself. And, you and then people were looking at me like, what is wrong with the fat teacher? Yeah. He's got Justin Bieber stuff in his head. You want it out so bad. Like I know. Thing. If they could ever come up with something to get songs out of your head, I would buy stock in that. 
Worst song that's ever been stuck in your head. I mean, like, I mean, just that's in there and like you can't get it out. Oh gosh. If you want my body, do you think I'm sexy by Rod Stewart? Oh, that one is that that's one of the top ones because that's one that gets stuck. And you think I'm sexy. Well, and if especially if you watch that Saturday Night Live skit. Roxanne. (laughs) No, yeah, there's some there's some bad ones. I'll yeah. tell you another one. I'll tell you another one that gets stuck in my head that, and I don't even know very many words to it, but just the beat of it. And then a couple of the lines, I got a brand new pair of roller skates. <laughs> that stupid song. Um, yeah. Hey, and since we are a Razorback sports podcast, we need to cover last week's Razorback basketball. Uh, we lost to the worst team in the SEC, Vanderbilt. I'm yeah. surprised Gary Stackhouse is still employed, to be honest with you. Yeah. And we gave up a lot of points to Kentucky, scored a lot of points, gave up more. Yeah. That was your basketball update, courtesy of Big C. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about Holy Snikes. Holy Snikes. Do you, do you want to talk about the boy, my 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 pride and joy? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about your son first. Yeah, let's That's talk right. about my son. So I told Travis, we're going there. I said, I've told everybody the story. One of my employees at work said, man, I've heard that story like five times already. I'm like, because it's hilarious. So I have a 12 year old son who um, looks like you would imagine this look like at 12 years old. <laughs> same, same as Zach. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's me. Yeah. Well, so I text him like, Hey buddy, school going good. He lives with my ex-wife in Fort Smith. And so text me like, I have texted him like three times last week. Like, Hey buddy, you doing good. And so I call him. On Friday, I finally called. I said, so he didn't answer your text? Never returned my text. Oh, he's and ghosting you. Yeah, he's ghosting me. I'm like, yeah, he's too cool for you. Yeah, I'm like, this, I'm, mm. I deal with this with chicks in college. I ain't going to put up with this crap now. That's right. <laughs> so, I said, I, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. And I, you'll not blame my Xbox. That's what we'll do. How about That's that? Right. I said, how petty I can be. <laughs> so I call him. I'm mad. Like, I'm not mad, but you know, I'm like mildly perturbed. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you realize I texted you three times this week? He goes, oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. And while I'm on the phone with this little rat, he goes, stinker. He he responds, going good. (laughs) (laughs) You freaking text me. Yeah. Did you just text me while I was on the phone with you? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's nice. I was like, I didn't know he was just doing it, being oblivious. Yeah. He wasn't. He was doing that because he is my child. And just, like, right. You want me to text you? Fine. Here you go. Nice. <laughs> I was like, yep. Yeah. I'm like, yep, yeah, that is that is my child. There you go. But yeah, I mean, look, literally, he just texted me, going good. Going good. I called him every day this week. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, you're not going to learn to return a text. You want to talk on the phone. That's right. Yeah. So. Nice. Little Austin. Little Austin. Austin Thomas. There you go. He's, he's made that appearance on the podcast before. He has, yeah. He's popped his head stand in, in. Stand in. Yeah. Looks like a little miniature me. So That's right. This is what you got to look forward to, kid. That's right. <laughs> Apparently, what you got to look forward to is Meryl Pattern Baldness. That's right. Well, uh, how about the lady of the week, Caitlin Clark? Oh, yeah. Caitlin Clark. Man, Clint. I've been Caitlin Clark once. Uh, that lady can play the basketball she can shoot she can shoot the hoops and she can put it in the net how many points did she end up with okay hold on we looked at it um i think it's 3668 i think it's but i mean she's still she's yeah oh well it's yeah just Yep, three hundred three. the The record was three six six seven, and so she's past that, and it's she, still going. Yeah, still. I mean, she's still got, got the rest of the season to go. Yeah, she's got. Now, the, who did she beat? Whose record did she beat? Uh, Pistol Pete Maravich. Pistol Pete Maravich. Now the question is, and and other people have talked about this. We're not the ones to come up with this question, but it's a good question. Will a guy ever get that record back? 
No, a hundred percent. No, uh, in college pistol, basketball, Pistol Pete. Which Pistol averaged what thirty eight points a game without a three point line? Something ridiculous. Yeah, something ridiculous. And that's another thing that that you know. And, and look, we're not diminishing what this young lady has done by saying Pistol Pete didn't ever yeah. three point line. Uh, no, I mean it's it's what she's yeah. done. Nothing short of just impressive. Yeah. But I mean, it's in, I mean, hey, man, it's, it's impressive a lady doing it. I mean, I'm good for her. But the truth is, no guy will ever do will ever beat that because no guy's gonna if they're scoring that many points a game, they're gonna head to the NBA. They're not gonna be in college long enough to set that to break that record. You know, I, I do think she could have said it where it would be unbreakable. Yeah, if she cho- chose to do so. Because Caitlin Clark could have came back for her super senior year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And 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 people were saying with NIL being the way NIL is, that she would have, she would have literally, literally, that's a hard word to say, literally, yeah. um, try to put a couple extra L's in there. Yeah. In the middle of it, nonetheless. Yeah. So she literally would have made more money playing another season. Yeah. Iowa, but she chose, yeah, just NIL money. Um, but she chose to go ahead and, I mean, declared early for the NBA. And I guess, you know, I I started wondering if maybe more athletes will start doing that because they just kind of like, look, let's, I'm going, let's not even speculate, let's just end speculation now. Because what was going to happen was she was going to get asked about it every press conference. So, yeah. so no, it's a. I mean, it's not surprising, but you know, it's a it's a crazy record, and uh, she's, you know, hey man, good for her. But there'd never be a guy have break that record, and you know, it's on. It goes on the list, you know, kind of like the Cal Ripken record of records that we'll probably never see broken. We'll never see the Wilt Chamberlain. You know, fifty points a game record broken in NBA. Yeah. Um, that won't that won't happen. Uh, but so, yeah, let let me ask you this question. This is a weird question. Just so we've we've witnessed some crazy records be broke in our mm-hmm. in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. All a lot of them seemed like this record will never be broke, and then it gets broken. Yeah, what record's been broken that that we thought? would never be broken will be broken again in our lifetime oh will be broken again yeah because i'm I'm gonna say to me it'd be the single season home run record see i think it'll get broken again yeah yeah i think it'll get broken broken again um the way I, the way the game has changed where people focus on home runs yeah there's gonna be someone get on fire and break barry bonds record yeah, I, I, you know, and I do think, and of course, you know, I was really spicy at the time, but you know, when Pujols left St. Louis, mm. I do think if Pujols would have never left St. Louis, he would be the all time home run king in yeah. a group. I just think, he, I really, my, I wholeheartedly believe that. Um, yeah. He's still a first ballot Hall of Famer, but um, I was still, I, you remember, I was spicy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, so I think, now, I think on to let's let's get on to some Razorback stuff real, for a little bit, and then we can come back to there's some other things I want to talk about. But um, you know, baseball, I get they're playing UCA tonight. I don't, I don't have you they seen are, they played today, and Arkansas was up pretty good. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, the baseball team, man, the pitching is. I think I think I heard on the radio this morning they're averaging thirteen strikeouts per game, that, something like that per nine yeah. innings, something like that, which is awesome. I mean, it's that's gonna, that's gonna be hard to maintain that throughout the year, but the pitching's looking good. The only team, you know, I think uh, Wake Forest and I think Arizona's got a really good pitching squad too. But they, they, the only, they said they're the second best behind Wake Forest. Yeah. Thing I've read. Yeah, Wake Forest has some guys that are very high ranked. Um, I think at the beginning of the season they had three guys ranked in the top seventeen pitchers in the nation. 
all on one squad. I so hope they're getting good NIO money living in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it's awful. Oh, being man. a demon deacon. Yeah, but they're uh, also, you know, the base. So the baseball team's looking pretty good. You mentioned the basketball team. You know, I guess they, you know, Caleb Battle. Where did he come from? You know, scoring all kinds of points, but it's not helping them. I mean, you know, I mean, Marks isn't scoring as much anymore. You know, I mean, he's scoring, but he's not like like he was earlier in the season. And Battle, Battle's crushing it, but you know, you know, you, score, you know, if, if you crush it, you score a lot of points, and you don't win. And what's the point? You know. Could you argue that this is that, that this season will actually be an advantage for Musselman next season? Um, because he gets a jump start in the portal. That's true. I mean, um I like guess he, so. He, he, he ain't busy game planning. He just and, no. and he pulls his teams out of the portal. Um yeah. I don't know, man. It's that we well, still don't want to lose like this. No, you don't want to. It's not fun. I'm not taking yeah. that. We've, man, let's quit talking baseball. Um, man, you know who's re- who's really impressing me on this team, and he gave up a shot this weekend. Is Will McIntyre? Oh yeah, he he is he is he is he is Dave Van Horn's go shut this mess down pitcher. Yeah, because Gage Wood got into some trouble against. Um, I'm brain farting who they played. Um. James Madison or James Madison. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think it was James Madison. But yeah, they they played James Madison. And he Gage Wood got into some trouble. And yeah. uh he Will McIntyre came in the bases loaded, shut it down. And then he did give up a dinger, but that's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, you know, so no yeah. man, they're they're you know, the team's gonna, you know, we'll see how they round out, you know, if this pitching stays tight like it is. You know, um, if Smith and Tigert and McIntyre and and the rest of the young guys, if they keep showing well, off like they are, yeah, man, Lita and Colin Fisher, yeah, if they if they keep keep their uh, things going, this could be a special year for baseball. Now, no, here's the no, other thing: important if they don't make it to Omaha, it really will be. Yeah. The other thing: this it's the time of year, man. Spring football is about to start, Clint. Spring football, here we go. And this has been probably the least talked about offseason for Arkansas football we've had in a while. But here, but why? It it is it is gonna be this is gonna be a crazy, yeah, crazy, and, and this is gonna be a crazy spring camp. Yep. But but here, but here, but we but you know what? We're not going to get the juicy deets that we want. And let me tell you why we're not going to get the juicy deets we want. You think Sam Pippen's going to put a depth chart out? No. Back? You think he's going to – I mean, I guess one of the guys could just be a head and shoulders above somebody else. But, I mean, I don't think you're going to see much of a depth chart put out at all. No. At any position because we live in the world of the transfer portal. Now he said he said in his press conference today that he wants to uh he he wants to decide on the quarterback in the spring. That's his goal. Now that's definitely what you tell the players in the meetings and everything, you know, but if it doesn't shake out and you have to go into the summer and let them compete during the summer, by all means let them compete. Uh just okay. Well, this before spring practice, no spring practice has happened. Pittman didn't tip his hand at all in the press conference. Let's just make our prediction. Yeah. How do you see the quarterback depth chart shaking out? Man, something just tells me Malachi Singleton's going to win the job. That's I've interesting. Got- I think Green will be number two and Criswell will be three. Wow. That's – but, I, do, I mean, I base that on nothing. I think most people are predicting uh, the transfer from Boise State. Um, I tell you what, if there's, if there's somebody there 
and I don't know if it's going to come down to ability. Somebody that enjoys being coached hard. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, look, you say what you want to about Petrino. He's going to be hard on you. Yeah. He's going to he's going to hold you accountable, and you're going to be a, you're going to develop as a quarterback. Yeah. And and these kids probably haven't been talked to the way Bobby Petrino is about to get ready to talk to. Them. You're right. So there there's some guys that will thrive off that. Yeah. And some, and some guys that will shut down off that. They'll go into their hidey hole. Yep. So it just depends. I really think it, it, it depends on what's between the ears. Yeah. Um well, it, my prediction, I think it's Criswell because he's got the strongest arm. Yeah. And I think I think Green will get there will be he'll be some Matt Jones type packages for Green. Yeah. I think I think we're gonna we may see a two quarterback system. Not yeah. not fully the way it was with Matt Jones. Right, yeah. Uh, but that's what he that's what they ran it. Boise with him, you know, he it was so, a two quarterback. They rotated him in, so the be be more of a Darren McFadden, Casey Dick, Mitch Mustang uh, dynamic. More similar, yeah, yeah. Um, except, except uh, Green's got a better arm, of course, and you know he'll he'll throw more. But, but I think uh, he's dynamic running the ball, and so, you know, Chris Wells not bad running the ball, and Chris Wells two hundred and thirty pounds, man. He's you know he's like six two two thirty. He's a thick dude, you know. He's well, and everybody's going to get every. I mean, everybody's got a shot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but you know, but what you said with Malachi Singleton, I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden Malachi Singleton ends up on top. You know, but I just think Chris Well, I think he's going to respond well to to Bobby. I think he's going to. I think he's got a good head on his shoulders, and I think you know just from what I've heard about him. But uh, anyway, um, some things that Pittman talked about in his press conference. Of course, if you hadn't heard, Andrew Chamley, uh, a friend of the program, we interviewed him. Yeah, we interviewed him. Uh, of course, we got him and Hudis like right before we realized how bad our offensive line was at Arkansas this year. Uh, we interviewed had them. Well, they were they're they're great kids that were probably they learning. Were wonderful kids, yeah. Wonderful kids. Wonderful. Great interviews. Uh, Chambly was a nice guy. Great interview, but according to Pittman, had decided that he just didn't love the game anymore and wanted to focus on his college education, and um, so has uh, stepped out of football and uh, is focusing on college now. So that takes away one of your offensive linemen. I think that gets them down to 13, yeah. uh, 12 or 13. So uh, Kudis has been moved inside. He's going to play some center, play some guard. Um, Crawford's going to – they said they're going to keep on the outside, keep a tackle. Uh, he did say – he did mention Harris has looked really good in workouts. Uh that he really likes what he's seeing out of him. And uh and then he's got some portal guys, which I don't I don't have their names here. Um uh, but um that he had, you know, that's transferred in. Uh oh, this Nichols. He's the Nichols is the guy from Tennessee, but he's from Georgia originally. Okay. Uh, he's the one that uh Play I, believe, I believe he's the one that Pittman offered at Georgia and that he can play center. Yeah. Or that he's going to, they're going to try him at center. And uh, he's 6'5, 306. So he's not, you know, not a huge, he's, you know, pretty tall, but not huge weight wise. Uh, well, the, the, the offensive line is definitely going to be completely different than what we saw last year. Yeah. Andreas Plasky, he's from uh he's the Denmark kid. He's a tight end. He's he's the one from Eastern Michigan. 
Okay. Um, let me see. Tommy Varhall. That's the one from Jose State, isn't it? From Maryland. Oh, Maryland. Okay. He's IMG Academy in Maryland. He's 6'8, 327. Um, let me see here. Oh, wow. A kid from Camden Fairview, Tim Don. I know him. All right. He's an offensive lineman. He transferred from Baylor. I didn't know he transferred up there. He's 6'2", 311, so he must have come with Mateos up yeah. there. But see, it, it, but seriously, you listed off a bunch of names and a bunch of scenarios. You know, because I know that kid that transferred from San Jose State like supposed to be really good. Yeah, Fernando Harmona, yeah, six five three twenty four. He's from Vegas, but he went to San Jose State. And then uh, Keyshawn Blackstock, he's from Michigan State. State. Michigan State. So yeah. But, it, but, man, there's so many new names up there. And there's, you know, you've got Marion Harris that you've developed. you got Patrick Kudis that you've developed. And you brought in all these new plug-and-play guys. Um, and then Crawford has been has been there. He was a transfer originally from Charlotte. But, you know, he's been there. So you got three guys that have been in the system. And then you got some other guys that, that have been there too. Um, Street um, and, and some yeah. guys like that. But there's competition. You don't know how that offensive line is going to shake out. Like it is, it's, and and Josh Braun is back. Um, yeah. Um, I figure they'll play, try him at center some too. You know, he played a little bit there. Yeah, and he'll probably be a guard. Yeah, he doesn't want to play outside, and that's part of the reason he left. Yeah, but you've got a lot of. I mean, like. It, you don't even know who the who the starting running back is going to be. I mean, you've got August Dave, um, DeBinion coming back, um, Dominic Johnson. It's like the only position, I think, the starting position that's settled on the offense is your wideouts are probably, you know, settled. Your top four or five are settled. Your guys that are going to play, play. And then Lucas Haas um, at tight end. Yeah, um, and, and, and Pittman did say he's healthy. And, yeah, he's and healthy. And then plus Tyrese Crawford. I mean, not Crawford. Um, Ty Washington. Ty Lucas Washington State. is. Uh, they're slow playing him. He he may get to he. They may not tackle him very much in the spring. Yeah, but he's he's coming back. Um, well, but still, just being able to participate in seven on seven and stuff like that, even if he doesn't go full live, that'll really help him um, over over there. Um, what are they saying about the defense, Big T? Was it? Well, you know, we lost a lot of linebackers. Um, yeah, we took a bloodbath in the linebacker room. But he he says he likes the room. He likes the players he has. They have moved, uh, I forget which one it was, but a defensive back down to linebacker. Um, so they're, they're having to do some, you know, rearranging there. Um, well, keep in mind that the portal's going to open again, you know, at some point in, in the spring. Um, so who knows? May definitely it may not be the room may not be settled come. Well, and that's what he said. He said, um he said they're still got about four spots they're looking for in the portal. And the main spots they're looking for is line, offensive lineman and linebacker. Yeah. And they and they would take a receiver if they could find one. They said they wanted four receivers, they got three. He said, We got the three we wanted, but he said we would still like to have one more. Yeah. And um so uh that's uh you know, so we'll see some movement there, probably. You know, we'll see, you know, of course we'll see some of these guys leave. Some you know, some of the ones that are there, they're gonna not have a good spring, maybe, or 
or someone else is going to have a good spring and, you know, looks like the writing will be on the wall for them. And so they're going to, they're going to head out. And, well, uh, thing that's just going to happen. And then there's the nature of college football is there's turnover now, you know, yeah. at, I mean, at the, at the position coaches, there's some of these guys that are going to go out for spring ball. And they're going to realize, I think my position coach is a jerk. Yeah. And they're going to hit the portal because they don't want to, you know, they don't want to play for that coach too. There's all kinds of reasons that guys hit the portal. Yeah. And so we'll see, we'll see what happens. So, um, you know, the man that lived at that, I, I was telling my wife, I said, this man lived my dream. I wanted to be a lifelong NFL center, um, retired today. Yeah. Or not today, retired yesterday. Yeah. Jason Kelsey. Um, you know, he started out as a linebacker. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And then he just was undersized, got moved to to center. And mm. he, he just, he, he, I don't, it never seemed like he's the most talented kid, but he just seemed like he probably worked harder than everybody else. Yeah. I said, you know, maybe. Well, and he was, you know, he, you know, listening to his, some of his, uh, you know, his press conference where he announced, you know, he gave a long speech and of course it was tear filled, but you know, he, he really got lucky in a lot of ways because he, he got to Cincinnati and he had a strength coach that said, Hey, maybe you should go to offensive line. And, uh, you know, and they were able to get him some size on and get him, you know, to where he could, he could play offensive line, but, then when he went pro, he was way undersized for the offensive line. Yeah. Except for for a guy like Chip Kelly and his offense. Well, he was drafted by Andy Reid, though. Well, he was drafted by Andy Reid. But he really got his ex his chance for a lot of playing time and to shine as an offensive lineman under Chip Kelly's offense. Yeah. And that really solidified him. You know, because Chip Kelly liked more athletic, you know, in in his offense, and you know, and Andy Reid, you know, has athletic offensive linemen too. But um, but anyway, so that, yeah, man, it's uh, it was you know, tear field, but man, he uh, yeah, he's, you know, he he's gonna do the podcast thing, you know. Oh, he's, man. well, he's got the number one sports podcast in the world. Yeah. Um. It, it, you know, well, that's because all the Taylor Swift fans are wanting to hear his brother talk. No, it was the number one sports podcast last year too. Yeah, but I'm sure the the the, the love from the Swifties doesn't hurt. Yeah, uh, yeah, but you can just tell like he see he seems like a genuine all around good dude. Yeah, uh, it was like man, like it it was it was emotional enough that he's earned um enough that we have to at least mention it on the podcast. I guess I don't I yeah. don't know. But now you're telling me um, as things change, they're talking about making some rule changes to college football. That's right. I wanted to bring these up. Um, college football is thinking about they're fixing to vote on some rule changes. And Pittman was asked about them in his press conference today. And um, <clears throat> there's three main ones. And, and there's another one we'll mention too that I, I hadn't heard mentioned until I looked up what these – I wanted to make sure what these three were because I'd heard people talk about them this week. And, uh, you know, I heard them talk about it in a couple of different places. And then this other one they hadn't really talked about, but I think it's one that'll, that'll impact the game. The first one and the biggest one is helmet communication. So just like the NFL, there'll be a one player on offense and one player on defense that'll have communication in their helmet. Of course, on offense, it'll normally be the quarterback, uh, on defense, it's usually going to be a linebacker, but it can be any of the players. I mean, it doesn't have to be those. Um, I could see some coaches out there, you know, having their center wear it or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but more than likely, it's going to be a quarterback. Um, they get to, you know, they'll get to talk to a coach until 15 seconds left on the play clock, and then it goes dead. And then they would, uh, they would, uh, it would go dead and they would, you know, then run the play or whatever. Most people feel like that's going to pass. It should. Yeah. Um, and Pittman said so today. He said it should pass. 
Well, they were wanting, like, I guess part of the thing was, is like, well, they can't do it in Division Two. They're just, they, yeah. you know, lower divisions. It's like, it's common sense. Like, yeah. Like all your FBS teams, including, you know, Sunbelt and that, they sh- they've got the money to do it and the technology to do it. And, yeah. Um, I, I think it's just, it's, it's a common sense thing and it needs to happen. Um, with the gets- technology we have today, I mean, of course, the way these offenses are ran, like a Gus Malzahn or something, it's going to make them even more dangerous, dude. Yeah. Because the, the coach calls all the plays anyway. I mean, the coach makes all the reads. And up in, if they do a hurry up, no huddle, if they, you know, they get the play out there to them quickly and get them lined up, they get the formation, and then the coach is going to be able to read it. That would be the only thing I would be against it in college football because of the way they call the plays and the way they they read the defenses because it's, you know, and, and like Gus Malzahn's offense, it's Gus reading the defense or the offensive coordinator. Same thing with Kendall Brawls. And Kendall Brawls, yeah. And so he's going to be even more potent, man, if he's able to, to – sit there and tell that quarterback, okay, watch that safety. That safety's coming up on you. You know, I mean, your throw's going to be this guy right here. You know, I mean, it's – dude, that's that's going to be – it's it's going to make the offense even more – I mean, offense has already got all the rules in their favor. It's yeah. going to make it even worse. As they should. Yeah. And like I said, if it was to the point – if it was – just to get them to play and that's it, if that's all they could do, or like in the NFL, all they do is they give them a play and the quarterback makes the reads. So it's, you know, I mean, I'm sure they do a little more than that in the NFL, but most of the time they just let the, they just trust the quarterback to make the reads. But in the college, the quarterbacks aren't trained. I mean, that was to me, that was one of KJ's problems. He couldn't make the reads. And how much better of a quarterback would he be if he had, if he has Gus in his ear this year, you know, or if Browse could have been, or if, if Enos would have been in his ear, would he have been better? No. You know? All right. The second one is this two minute warning. They're going to add a two minute warning to college. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah, whatever. It's another timeout. It's another. Do whatever you want to do it. Well, it's see, another chance for TV to get some They ain't sitting at ES, They ain't sitting at ESPN. And go like, look, man, look, bro. Listen, you realize just adding two minute warning will add this much ad revenue. And help us. Right. We just giving y'all these gajillion dollars. Is the least they can do is to add another commercial break. That's right. So, yeah, uh, here's here's the third one. Use of tablets on the sideline. And I think I think they're gonna they have it to where have. they you know they can do like like live replay. So you remember uh, who was it? Will uh, what was that defensive coordinator we had? Will old guy? Oh yeah, yeah. Will, Willie um, Willie Robinson. Willie. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody always wanted him fired. Yeah, and he he's like, we don't have any pitchers. We don't have any pitchers in the NFL. We had pitchers. Remember after that one game where they had their defense did bad? Yeah. Well, he gets his pictures now. In fact, he would get video replay that he can show the team on the sideline. So they could sit there like in the NFL and watch, you know, oh, here's what they did. You're watching game film in real time on the, you know, or just right after the time on the sideline. You you know, you know what this is. For years, the NCAA has been like, no, if we can't do it at Division Two or Division Three, we can't do it. We can't do it at, in the SEC. Yeah, they've done that, and now so what basically has happened is the SEC and the Big Twelve has basically gained our Big Ten. They've made it to where they're so powerful now. Well, but like- Clint, I know you haven't gone to any high school games lately. They're doing this at high school games. Well, yeah, obviously they have TV. They have TVs on the sideline. No, I no, and I I hundred percent believe it. But I'm just saying, some they're, of you, they're putting little tents up for the offense to be under and the defense to be under. 
and they'll they'll put put a TV up, and they got a video feed going to the TV, and the coach will sit there and show them play, will send plays down to them, and they'll show them plays on the sideline, and that's in like four A five A. Yeah. Um. Now, who did you do the announcing for? Where you were the voice of the radio, Bearden. Bearden. Did they have that technology at Bearden? No. Let me ask you another question. Dress now, some you, of the schools they played did. Now, have you ever played a game at the University of Arkansas Monticello? No. <laughs> yeah. No, it, 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 it just one of them things where, like, they're, they're, even at that, there's have, there have not. You yeah. never know on a football team, some dad, somebody's daddy might be the, the president of Riceland. Yeah. You know, somewhere, or, you know, in a big farm conglomerate or something like that, they just have a kid there and they just donate a bunch of money. Yeah. You know, you, you know, boosters, not every team's boosters are created equal, but it there, there's got to be at some point <laughs> common sense. Yeah. Just got to step in and say, look, okay, they may not. I, I get it. If you're, if you're, if one team doesn't have the technology, and the other team does well. The team that has the technology can't use the technology. Yeah, you know. It, but you know, when you're when you're Arkansas playing Texas, yeah. you know, playing M, playing Baylor, whoever it is, those teams they have the money for the technology. Yeah. Every, well, and everybody does nowadays. You can get tablets cheap. Yeah. I mean, my my school has Chromebooks for every kid in the school. And I'm talking all the way down to first grade. They have their own Chromebooks. Okay. And it's a 3A school. Okay. And not a wealthy school in it by any means. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's so anyway, uh, the last one uh, that I wanted to mention is, um, I think this one could, it's not really being talked about, but I think it could have a big impact, especially nowadays is warnings about uniform issues. Okay. So like a guy's leaving his shirt untucked, you know, cause the referee can stop the game and make a guy tuck his shirt in, you know what I mean? Or if a guy is not, uh, you know, they're buckling the chin strap deal, you know, was it Cincinnati that we played that, had a problem with keeping their chin strap buckle. Yeah. Um, you know, things like that. The referee can go give a warning. The new rule would be they could give a warning. Now this is the best I understand it. Someone else may read this somewhere else and, and they may say, okay, Travis, you're interpreting that wrong. But the way I interpret it was they get a warning. And then after that, if they don't come, if they, if it happens again, then they get charged. The team gets that it happens to gets charged a timeout. That's a pretty hefty penalty, man. You yeah, lose a you lose a timeout over what could be you know, especially if it's a. Let's just say if the, you know, I don't know the chin strap deal, would have been just a faulty, if if it was something faulty with the helmet. You know well, I mean? here's the thing is in the course of a game, you're active stuff's going to come untucked. Yeah. It's going to happen and you're going to, ha and then somebody's going to get warned and then something's going to happen. The shirt's going to get untucked and then there'll be, a, I think it's a bad rule and I hope that one doesn't pass. Yeah. To take away a timeout over that. It's a steep the targeting penalty. rule. Yeah. Fix the targeting There's rule. For nobody sure. that wants it. Yeah. There's no, I mean, well, the last thing I want to cover, Clint, um, I think it's the last thing I want to cover. Well, because I sent it to you. Is, uh, yeah, uh, Clint sent a deal about uh, this week. Uh, the tweet and, from Johnny Manziel. Well, and the, and the talk came up because Manziel was on Club Shay Shay, the Shannon Sharp podcast. You know, it's become famous now because of. Cat, uh, Cat Williams. Williams calling everybody out on it. He called us out. Yeah, that's right. Oh, he called Cat everybody Williams. out. You know what, yeah. Cat Williams? Come here and talk about it. We'll have you on the podcast. That's right, buddy. Um, but Manziel was on there, and he was talking about the fact, you know, one of the things that came up was the fact that Reggie Bush doesn't have his Heisman 
but forgetting, you know, forgetting actually a lot less than what Johnny got. And that was part of that, you know, Johnny got a lot more money than, yeah. you know, I mean, and then a lot less than what kids are getting now with NIL, which now if they, if, if, if it was now, which it wasn't now. Okay. And so I understand the argument. Yeah. But if it was now. That's how much money Johnny Manziel would make now. Well, and Reggie Bush, how much would he make? No, but Reggie remember Bush Reggie Bush. May, Reggie Bush may be the greatest college athlete we've seen in our lifetime. Well, I mean, there's an argument for that. Well, and that team that he was on too. Oh yeah. yeah. And the, how much Hollywood was around it. And so, uh, you know, and for him not to have his Heisman still and not to not, and, and the thing is like Manziel mentioned, it's not just not having the Heisman statue, but he doesn't get to be involved with all the, you know, Manziel talks about one of the best things is going back to the Heisman award and being in the room with those guys and eating dinner with them and, you know, sitting around and hearing their stories and talking to them and just the, all that kind of stuff. He doesn't get to be a part of any of that because it was taken away. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. He, the thing is, I mean, he broke the rule. The rule was broken. You know what? You know, he probably broke it worse than that, but that's just what he got caught for. What do you think? Think he should have it back? Yes. I think he should too. I think he's done his time. Let him have a hundred, a hundred percent. Um, you know, I, I think the last two Heisman winners got twelve million each. Yeah, I mean, let's just let's just be honest. I mean, they, they I mean, he, how many number five jerseys did the U.S. USC? Oh my gosh! I mean, yeah. you, but the the he 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 deserves it. He earned it. His yeah. performance on the field, just because he shouldn't lose it over something he did yeah. off, I mean, off the field, especially that every other kid did. Yeah. Give the give the man his Heisman back. I mean, yeah. just, and this is the reason we have the rules we have now. Yeah. This is because the NCAA continues, continues to get things like this wrong. Yeah. And that's why we're in the mess we are now. And that's why you're having the Big Ten and the SEC about to cut you out of football. Yeah. Because you continue. To you're get... right. You can't stop that from being right, show. I'm sorry. I got on my soapbox there. Yeah. I mean, you know, wow. yeah. It's exactly right, man. But I mean, but you continue to get it like like Justin Fields being immediately eligible to go to Ohio State Ohio State. But yet they have a coach just because he didn't like that they wouldn't start him from Drake from, and he's immediately eligible. But Ryan Mallett has a coaching change and transfers to Arkansas. Now you got to sit out a year. Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. Just whoever, like, just whoever flipped the coin that day. Yeah. I mean, just. No, anyway. you're up. All right. Well, folks, thanks for listening to our banter. Yeah. Thanks for uh, watching, listening, all that good stuff. We appreciate you. Hey, this like, cool. share, subscribe. Like, share. Subscribe, like, share, subscribe, like, share, yeah. subscribe. Do Hit it. the notification bell. Yeah. Ding. Whatever, whatever else you're supposed to do. Yeah. That's how we 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 need you. We need That's you. How we roll. We need you. We know we need you. So anyway, Clint, man, have a great week. Bye. Uh, be good. If not good, be good at it. There you go. If you're that good, be it twice. Peace. Flamingo. Sweat. Work. Filthy. Dirt. Harvest. Hurt. Kingdom come. That's why I swear
When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more than I hurt Cry in your kingdom come, listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers breaking up hard ground So I can sow the seed Ain't afraid of no aches and pain Lord knows I gotta follow his lead That's why I swear When I work my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more till I hurt Cry in your kingdom come My hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more than I hurt Crying in your kingdom door Sun beating down so hard I can barely breathe Hard to sing a joyful song The words got me on my knees Then the gentle breeze blows by Pick me up right on time Listen, now I know the Lord Working my by myself I swear When I work My hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more Till I hurt Crying your kingdom come 